This cattle webinar is about writing measurable objectives. In this presentation, we will define objectives, present a formula for writing objectives, and give some practice in writing measurable objectives. Let's go ahead and make sure we're on the same page and define instructional obje objectives. Dick and Reiser define instructional objectives as an explicit description of what students will be able to do as a result of the instruction they receive. Now notice how the definition focuses on the action of the student. This is the key to making objectives measurable. So let's focus on this definition as we move forward. But why do we even bother? Why should we even bother writing objectives? And what can objectives actually do for us? Well, objectives are considered the roadmap to instruction. When a clear map is laid out, the directions are clear about how to get from point A to point B. So we use objectives to give clear direction on how our instruction will navigate the learning process. In addition, clear objectives help streamline our course planning, for if we know what we want our students to know and do, we can select content, materials, and methods to meet those instructional needs. If objectives are written to be measurable, they can also serve as self-evaluation for students regarding their progress in acquiring the desired skills. Ultimately, objectives can be a framework for both the students and the instructor. We defined objectives, but let's explain the difference between an objective and a goal. A goal is usually a general statement of desired instructional outcomes. This statement can often be broken down into more specific behaviors. Goals are typically used for curriculum development as they are general and a bit abstract. An objective, on the other hand, is more narrow, tangible, and able to be validated. Objectives work well at a course level. So what makes a quality objective? First, objectives should be specific to the intended behavior that you'd like for your students. What do you want your students to know and do as a result of the instruction? Objectives should also be learner-centered, and that ensures the action is related to what the students do, not specific to what you as the instructor do. A quality objective is also measurable, meaning how it is accomplished and to what degree are stated in the objective. In addition, a quality objective also focuses on an outcome, not an activity. An objective should include language that talks about what will happen, not the learning activity that will be used to help that happen. Objectives should be appropriate for the level of students. This presentation will later present Bloom's taxonomy. Be clear here that that level appropriateness does not mean that we don't challenge our students to read these, reach these higher order, orders of cognitive domain. It does, however, mean that the way in which we ask them to reach higher order learning is by using skills and knowledge appropriate for their place in material acquisition. And finally, it's important that our quality objectives are simply stated using only one action and one verb. So avoid compound objectives. If you find yourself say, wanting to say and dot dot dot, then just write another objective. Now let's discuss a taxonomy that you can use to help think about how to create these quality objectives. Bloom's taxonomy of cognitive domain can provide a framework for helping craft various levels of objectives. The taxonomy is shown here and moves through the lowest order processes to the highest knowledge, comprehension, application, analysis, synthesis, evaluation. Please note, for those that are familiar with this taxonomy, you can see the so-called old domain is used in this presentation. The new domain includes remember, understand, apply, analyze, evaluate, create. Now let's use this taxonomy to help write objectives. This chart looks at each level of objectives. So first let's look at knowledge. The knowledge level is to show what you know and verbs such as write, list, and label are used in objectives that get at knowledge. An example, the student will define the six levels of Bloom's taxonomy of the cognitive domain. The next level is comprehension, and that is to show understanding using, using verbs such as explain, summarize, and describe. An example, the student will explain the purpose of Bloom's taxonomy of the cognitive domain. 
The next level is application, and that is the ability to use what was learned. Verbs such as use, compute, solve, demonstrate, and apply get to an application level. Here is an example. The student will write an instructional objective for each level of Bloom's taxonomy. The analysis level is a level where students can perceive and pick out the most important points in the materials or presentation. Verbs such as analyze, categorize, compare, contrast, and separate are used in objectives addressing this analysis level. An example, the student will contrast the cognitive and affective domains. At the synthesis level, we want, to show, we want students to show that they can combine concepts and create an original thought or idea. Some sample verbs include create, design, hypothesize, invent, develop. Here an example, the student will design a classification scheme for writing educational objectives that combine the cognitive, affective, and psychomotor domains. And the evaluation level is when we want students to judge and evaluate ideas, information, procedures, and solutions. Sample verbs for evaluation level objectives are judge, recommend, critique, and justify. The student will judge the effectiveness of writing objectives using Bloom's taxonomy could be an example of an objective at the evaluation level. Here's a list of verbs that can be used for each level of Bloom's taxonomy. You can consult this list when you're writing measurable objectives. And here is a list of verbs to avoid when you're writing measurable objectives. And we want to avoid these verbs because they cannot be measured and sometimes they're redundant. The formula we use for writing measurable objectives is A, B, C, and D. Let's walk through what each of those letters stands for. A is your audience, or the who, and that is always our student. B is for behavior, or the what, and this describes what the student will be expected to do as a result of the instruction. The C is the condition, or the when. The circumstances under which the behavior is to be completed should be stated, including what tools or assistance is to be provided. And finally, the D is the degree, or the how, and this describes the level of performance and how well or quickly the student will be expected to perform the behavior. So let's do a little practice. I've put together three examples. In each of these examples, let's try to answer these questions. Does each example have the formula, the A, B, C, and D? If not, what's missing and how could it be fixed? The first practice one is this. Given a standard sentence, the English 101 student should be able to identify the noun and verb without error. Does this example have A, B, C, and D? If not, what's missing and how could it be fixed? Take a minute to think about that and then progress to the next slide. The answer is this. Audience is defined as English 101 student. Behavior is to identify. Condition is given the standard sentence. And degree is without error. Here's the next practice. The student will be able to identify ways to increase healthy eating among children. Does this example have A, B, C, and D? If not, what's missing and how could it be fixed? Take a minute to jot down some notes, and then when you're done, progress to the next slide to see the answer. The answer here is that this objective has the audience, the student, and the behavior, identify healthy eating among children. What it's missing is the condition, or the when, the circumstance under which the behavior is to be completed that should be stated, including what tools or assistance is provided. So an example to add here is using documentation from the U.S. Department of Agriculture. The degree is also missing, the how, and that describes the level of performance and how well or quickly the student will be expected to perform the behavior. Here, we could add something to the extent of being able to list two programs. So if we rewrite this objective to be measurable and include A, B, C, and D, an example could include using documentation from the U.S. Department of Agriculture, the student would be able to critique two programs aimed to promote healthy eating among children by citing discrepancies in policy versus literature. Practice three objective. 
The student will identify correctly all white cells on a differential. Does this example have A, B, C, D? If not, what is missing and how could it be fixed? The answer is A, audience is the student, B, behavior is to identify, C, condition is on a differential, and D, degree is correctly or all. As a recap, when we write strong objectives, here's a checklist you can use to make sure that you include the items necessary for the strong objective. So let's make sure the objective addresses the A, audience or who, B, behavior or what, C, condition or when, and D, degree and how. In addition, you want to check off and make sure that your formatting and structure is correct, that it uses one verb, that it addresses one action, that you've re eliminated redundancy, that it's student-centered and can be measured, data source identified, and then the final checklist item, will the objective help you answer this question? Did you do and achieve what was intended? Thank you for reviewing this presentation about writing measurable objectives. If you do have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. I can be reached at kkepke at uwlax.edu. Thanks so much. Have fun writing your measurable objectives.